Okay, we're talking about the trial here with Gwyneth Paltrow. Donald Trump can wait. We got the scientist they brought in. He's like one of those guys from the Big Bang Theory and Newton's Law. Hey, this one. That's what you did here today. Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, why wasn't this instructor terminated for filing a false report? That this is his report. There's nothing in it that's false. Isn't that true that you believe he wasn't fired because he did nothing wrong? He did nothing wrong. Correct. Okay. Uh, and there was no cover-up by Deer Valley, correct? You did nothing wrong. No there was nothing sake. false. Thank you, Mr. Sykes. You're the lady in the background. She's like, this is so funny. I just want to ask you, Mr. Graphic. That's that guy. Everyone likes him. They're like, oh, my God, he's cute. He's got glasses. Clark Kent is back. And he's got braces, too. Oh, my God. You were asked <laughs> questions, not today, but before you left the stand yesterday by plaintiff's counsel about this uh, bad boot Bandana. Uh, entry mm -hmm. here. Do you see that? I do see that. And I, uh, um, do you remember bad boot? That was sort of a, a, a minor issue and, and he was asking why that would be long, but other major issues might not. Can you explain what is well, a bad boot? It, it, uh, yeah, and yeah, what would like it totally require of a oh, patrol yeah, uh, patroller who came upon that kind of a problem? You know, I'm not exactly sure what this bad boot issue was, but um, it could be that the buckle was broken. Yeah, because, could uh, be sir, that. we've got a bad boot. Sir, sir, we've got a bad boot up on uh, the, on the bunny hill. Bad boot, bad boot. We're going to need some backup here. Doctor, you're going to have to forget about this Ebola patient. we got a case of bad boots. I haven't seen a case of bad boot this bad since Ben Affleck and this Batman. This section here, 1202, and this little laser pointer. <laughs> In the nature of the injury discussion, it says here collision and disorientation. Do you know who wrote that? I don't know who wrote. Not it. exactly um, sure. Whoever is manning the dispatch uh, Norm uh, is the person who who puts these entries in. Okay, so would would it be fair to say then that it would not be Whitney Smith that wrote that? It would not be Whitney Smith. They're transcribing what Whitney Smith is saying over the radio. So Whitney Smith was on scene two minutes after the call came in. Um, and then whoever was there wrote down what she well, said. Why would you want to have a bad boot? I mean, who would ever want a bad boot anyway? Norm MacDonald here and... My name is Irving Schur, I-R-V-I-N-G. Last name is S-C-H-E-R. Thank you for being with us here today, Dr. Schur. Um, Where was Manning the dispatch? Let's begin by just asking you what you understand your role here to be today. Uh, to teach the jury about biomechanical engineering related to snow sports and particular skiing. And uh, do you have uh, an understanding of what plaintiff's biomechanical expert, Dr. Baim, has said about this case? I have, I've read his uh, deposition testimony. It doesn't matter what our name is, what matters is our plan and to go skiing and have a good time. It's like the guy from Big Bang that was cooler than everyone and made it to the big leagues. Money and his trial testimony. So I do understand what he's saying in the case, yes. Okay, and you have opinions about his testimony, is that right? That is correct. I have analyzed his uh, biomechanical analyzed. engineering analysis. So the jury will get to hear your response to his analysis. Exactly. Okay, great. Exactly. So before we get to that, let's talk about your background and training so they understand why uh, you and not me are, are, are on the stand. <laughs> sure. uh, Where'd you where get that you tie? School. I did my bachelor's of science and engineering at the University of Pennsylvania. I majored in mechanical engineering. Let's see Paul Allen's tie. And did you do a PhD thesis? I did. And can you explain what you worked on? Sure. Um, I, I was uh, the last in a line of what we called skiologists. Um, I. Okay, okay, uh, the last in the line. I was the last in the line of skiologists. I was the last of the skiologists. Studied the biomechanics of alpine skiing. I uh, created load cells, so those are uh, devices that measure the forces, and I put them in between the skis and the bindings, and uh, I had different instrumentation on skiers, and it was the first time, or at least that I'm aware of. He's hot. Biomechanical engineering is the application of physics and mechanical engineering to the human body, but in a forensic sense, um, it's what links the event to the injury. So if you have some type of event, 
and there's forces and motions in the event, in the accident. The forces are applied to a person. There's internal forces on their, like in their body at the joints or something like that. The amount of force and the amount of motion it takes to create damage to the body, that is biomechanical engineering. And how is that different than medicine? They're both uh, dealing with the human body. But oh, the please there, Leonard. Sure. The medical field tends to uh, take the injured person, figure out what's wrong with them, so diagnosis, and then try to get them better, so treatment, uh, with an eventual outcome. So um, most medical training is after the injury as opposed to what forces and motions create the injury. We like to think of ourselves on different sides of the injury. Thank you. To me, there's two parts to his analysis. The first is calculations to show that Miss Paltrow had to land on Mr. Sanderson in order to get the rib fractures that he got. And then there was a second part that basically said, um, because Miss Paltrow had to land on Miss Mr. Sanderson, that could only happen with Miss Paltrow hitting him from behind. It couldn't happen any other way. It was impossible. Okay, so Gwen and Paltrow had to land on Mr. Sanderson. Okay. All right, yeah, I need to get my ribs broken for the kind of pleasure that I need. Jump on me, baby. We'll go in those, we'll go over those in more detail. As you looked at his analysis, you read everything that he read, correct? I did. And did you read even more than that? Uh, I had additional depositions, that's correct. Of the various people that were at the scene of the accident. That's right. We can ha we have an easel, and as I understand it, you you would like to kind of draw so that you can show them what the equations mean. Is that correct? And that's easel. Exactly. Okay, so I'll grab the easel and then easel. that board. We're learning new words here today. Well, he gets a board and everything. It's drawing time. He's got his little pouch there. He's like, mm, I, I bought this for like fifty six dollars at um, London Drugs. It was actually a sale. It was normally priced at $72. Oh, there's some papers with calculations. I know everything about that. It's, N means new. They were just shown in Dr. Bain's deposition, so we're showing them here as well. Okay, but not in his trial testimony. He's responding to these. You said deposition. He also showed it in his trial testimony. So oh, trial deposition. Oh, trial deposition. I don't even know what I was talking about. Basic equations for what we call the center of mass to figure out what happens when someone falls to the ground. Uh, center of mass is if you were to balance someone on, on your finger, the point that you'd hold them at so that they stay balanced. Um, it's usually a little bit um, below your belly button, kind of midline front to back, midline left to right. Um, and so if you took the person's all the person's weight, all the person's mass, and put it into one point, that would be the point that you're interested in. So that's what Dr. Bame is doing in these calculations, is he's using that point for Mr. Sanderson. And this first part here, where he has this, um, that's an equation X is position. So he's saying there's a certain distance that center of mass falls. And you can see that over here. That's three and a half feet, or he does it in meters, 1.0668 meters. So center of mass falls to the ground. He's saying that there is no initial falling position. That, that's fine. No initial falling velocity. V is velocity. And then he has one half acceleration times time squared. And that equation times is time correct. squared, not times time. Is the acceleration from gravity. So what he's saying is, Mr. Sanderson's fall to the ground for the center of mass from three and a half feet, which is probably about right, hits the ground within, and he calculates the time, he solves for time, 0.466 seconds. <clears throat> so that's Have the a first second. part of that, which is great. The problem comes in that he then says the velocity at contact is one half acceleration times time. And that is absolutely wrong. That is of course, not the velocity like, of contact. Duh. The velocity Idiot. of contact is just the acceleration times time. So he has this oh, extra wow. half. And it was unclear to me why that would be there to start. And I'm not sure why he put that in. But it creates problems for his calculations and his opinions moving forward. If we can go to the next page, I can explain that. So. The These are Bain. his equations. If you remember in his testimony, he said 4,000 newtons 
and that's a, an engineering unit in, in metric for force. 4,000 newtons is roughly 950 pounds, I, I think, in English, but newtons is fine. In Over 4,000 newtons, you get the rib fractures. So what is this equation here? Uh, I'll show you that and then I'll explain that. why that one half makes a, a big difference. <coughs> so that equation there comes from, at first, kinetic energy. I'm not a mathematician. You label that as Ke, which is equal to one half mass times velocity squared for that center of mass. And then he's saying, okay, Mr. Sanderson, as he hits the ground, has a certain kinetic energy. That energy has to go somewhere. So what happens is a force is applied from the ground to his center of mass, and he decelerates over some distance. So you can see here he has three inches written here. That, that's important. So this kinetic energy has to be taken up by some force over a distance, that's some amount of work, and that will equal the kinetic energy. And then he divides both sides to get the force. The force. The distances cancel on this side. So the force on Mr. Sanderson is one half mass times velocity squared divided by distance. And that's exactly what we have here. We have one half mass, velocity squared, and distance. Remember, he's doing this in metric. So that 136. Yeah, Canadians. Yeah, 136 times 2.2, buddy. That's equal to about 300 pounds. That's some good math skills right there. So here he has Miss, Miss Paltrow and Mr. Sanderson's mass put together. So in this fall, he's saying, okay, the kinetic energy of both of them is needed here during contact. But can we go back to page five? Um, he uses the velocity here, the 2.29, that has the one half in this. So Oops. if we go to the next page, yeah. So you can see he's using the wrong velocity. What happens is if you use the wrong velocity in here, let's do BAMES as, call this wrong. Wrong velocity. So what you get is one half mass times one half acceleration times time. About 4,000 something, right? Oops, that's weird. There we go. Divided by distance. Distance, and of course. And that's the right timeline. This is just like the alternate uh, timelines in Back to the Future, part two. Yes! Is one half mass. Over the volume there. They edited that calculation out. It was acceleration times time squared. Acceleration. So that one half goes into this equation. What does that mean? That means that this half gets squared. It becomes one fourth. So the Four. force that Dr. Bame calculated for this landing. It's four times less. Actually, one fourth of the force he should have calculated. He was off by a factor of four. So it shouldn't be 4,680 newtons. It should be 16,600 16, and some newtons. Actually, I have it. You say 18,000? Wait, what? Um, 18,678 newtons. So yeah, write that down. It's like quite a bit. And if I may, 4,900 something. What, so, okay, so this is obviously all uh, uh, at least new to me and maybe new to some jurors. What in the end uh, is, is the takeaway there, if there's that much of a mistake? So there's, there's two things. One is if there were 18,000 newtons applied to Mr. Sanderson's chest, we would expect much worse injuries. The biomechanical engineering literature for much less than that has. Yeah, like his, his internal organs would have exploded. It would have been like three, it would have been like four Gwen, Gwyneth Paltrow jumping on you. Oh, goopy, goopy, goo! Many more rib fractures, internal injuries, all sorts of things. We don't see any of that for Mr. Sanderson. But the real takeaway and, and the importance in this case is the mass here. So because he does the one quarter, he needs the mass, oh, he needs the oh, mass to be that. 136 kilograms. Now, if you redo the calculations correctly with, with just Mr. Sanderson's mass, so Mr. Sanderson is about 80 and a half kilograms or roughly kilograms. 
177 pounds, at least according to the medical records. If you do the calculations with the correct equations, wow, and only his mass, you get over 4,000 newtons when he lands. Actually, you get 11,056 newtons. So if he were to fall to the snow using Dr. Bame's calculation method the correct way, then just Mr. Sanderson falling, not Miss Paltrow involved at all, he could get rib fractures. Just by himself. This is not quite correct overall. Normally we use what's called effective mass. So yeah, all of Mr. Mass. Sanderson's mass effect. wouldn't go through his chest. Maybe there'd be some force on his legs. If he hit his head, some force on his head. We typically would say maybe 50% of his mass would be appropriate for effective mass. So instead of the 80 kilograms, we would do Actually, I should put over here, this winds up being 11,000 newtons. And if we do the 40 kilograms instead for Mr. Sanderson, like so... 5,500 about. Um, and that's... Uh, and we use the correct equation. We get... Sorry, I don't do the math in my head. Um, 5,000... 500 newtons, uh, approximately. What I just said, 5,500. He's like, I don't want to do Mr. the math Sanderson in my head. Fall to the ground without. <laughs> That's exactly half. What do you think's half of 11,000? This guy's a complete genius, but he couldn't do that. What the hell? So, if done correctly, he cannot say his opinion that Miss Paltrow had to land on Mr. Sanderson to get the rib fractures, which means that this goes through the rest of his analysis. So, the rest of his analysis is wrong. So this is really critical, that one half that, that he did for the velocity, the, the wrong velocity, yeah, wrong. really wrong. threw the rest of his analysis into question. Because the last so of the skiologists, I think you should listen to about the calculations, I'm sure. And you would, <laughs> you would approach it differently than he did, correct? That, that's correct. All but right. given the way he did it, if he did it correctly, you're saying that the... Um, the, the conclusions that he came to are inconsistent with his opinion. That's correct. Yeah, it's basically him just saying, it's time to wrap things up, Mr. Fancy Big Bang Theory guy. His last name is Sure. that's how smart he is. I haven't seen a case of bad boot this bad since, bad boot this bad, I haven't seen a case of bad boot this bad since Batman. I haven't seen a case of bad boot this bad since Batman, starring Ben Affleck. But but boom bad boot this bad, Ben Affleck, Batman, bad, bad boot, bad boot, bad boot, bad boot. Or it could be that guy from Seinfeld, uh, George's old boss. Want a bad boot there, George? Hey there, Coco, you monkey. Go, 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 go. Where's your bad boot? Ski, ski, skiologist. The TV show that you need to see. What is that, like the Bee Gees or something? I don't 